If you were born in the 90s, oh boy, was it a time to be alive when the 2002 Spider-Man movie came out because of how spectacular it was. Even after all these years, I was four when this movie came out, so I can't say for sure if I've seen it in theaters or not. Oh, but I did see Spider-Man 2 though, on the big screen. But I want to talk about the movie that started it all. The combination between Sam Raimi's direction, mixed with Danny Elfman's score, and on top of that, Tobey Maguire's beautiful face, created a timeless classic that no matter how aged the CGI was, this movie is always such a joy to watch. I always appreciate the mixture between practical effects, practical stunts, and CGI to capture the essence of Spider-Man's power. The way that Spider-Man web swings is so beautifully mesmerizing. The creativity and, and just the amount of so much care that goes into how Spider-Man moves became the groundwork or standard on how you make your own Spider-Man movie. Some of the fight scenes, particularly one, it could be a little dated because it just looks like Power Ranger fighting. Although if you're a Power Ranger fan, I imagine that's still cool, but still like, I, I mean, it's fine. It's fine, it's the 2000s, that's fine. It's just a nitpick. But the final fight scene, oh, oh, oh yeah. Bloody, broken, beautiful, messy. Oh, oh yeah. Tommy McGuire does an excellent job at as both Spider-Man and Peter Parker. I know a lot of people say that, oh, he's a good Peter Parker, but not a good Spider-Man. I argue he does both really well. Although to be fair, I feel like he does a better job in the later movies. Whenever he quips, it doesn't come as natural as say Tom Holland or Andrew Garfield. I mean, don't get me wrong, in the video games, it is much better. Shouldn't you be helping some old lady across the street or something? Nah. I already got that merit badge. I do like the way he carries himself as Spider-Man. I, I, yeah, we could talk about Peter Parker all day where it's like, yeah, he's a dork, he's a nerd. The social awkwardness that you expect to come from Peter Parker, he, he did that perfectly well. But as Spider-Man, I like the confidence in the way he moves. I love his body language whenever like he's around danger and he has to be cautious about it. I really like those poses. I love that sense of urgency that he has. Very perfectly handled. And even the confidence when he stands up the bad guys. I really love it. I love Tobey Maguire as Spider-Man. Not bad for a guy who never read the comics, which should never be a number one requirement. It's nice if someone knows the source material to art, but as long as they care about their job and are trying to give the performance justice, that's all I care about. I mean, we've seen Spider-Man fans make stupid shit, and I really don't feel like talking about a controversial element in the movie. I'd rather talk about MJ in the next one, because Jesus. I think Kristen Dunst did an excellent job in the movie. I think she's gorgeous as hell. Say what you want about Mary Jane. All I am talking about is the actress. I like her. I'm not talking about the writing involving her character. I think she was a great choice to play Mary Jane. Is that okay to say? But I really want to talk about the Green Goblin. I love Willem Dafoe as the Green Goblin. He, oh my god, like I, words cannot describe how incredible this performance was. Like he was perfect. Perfect, the perfect villain. So much, so much, so much face. So much face. Look at that face. Look at that face. Look at the, oh my god, the laugh. The laugh. Even trying to do it, like, like trying to mimic it, is so much fun. The quotes, the memes, whatever it is, it's just so good. And honestly, my opinion, I like the costume. I like the mask. Scared the hell out of me as a child. Everything scared the hell out of me as a child, especially the seizure scene. Holy crap, I had nightmares in regards to this performance of the Green Goblin. I wish I was kidding. I I, I had nightmares. That was not, not a good time. I'm being dead serious, so it's not good. Well, the foe just completely crushed it. Like, uh, man, I really wish I was a poet. I wish I had Shakespearean dialect to tell you how insane insanely incredible all of this was Willem Dafoe the writing for the Green Goblin perfect he was menacing scary everything you want in a villain nowadays a lot of people what they crave is a villain who isn't a villain per se meaning that like you have someone who just happens to do bad things but their heart was in the right place but this is a villain who enjoys being evil and I love it. Somebody who just has so much fun that you can't help but feel the same way every time he's on screen. He gives Spider-Man a run for his money. He is challenging to Peter Parker, not just physically, 
but mentally, emotionally, spiritually. He was the reason why Peter couldn't be happy at the end, but how he felt like he had to reject Mary Jane for her own protection because if any of his villains find out that he's Spider-Man, that they'll go after her, which is exactly what happened in the movie when Goblin found out his identity. That is the sign of a true villain, and even after he was gone, the effects, the consequences, bled in both Spider-Man 2 and 3. <laughs> he literally haunted the fucking movies. It's incredible. But what's obnoxious to me is the fact that people want Willem Dafoe as the Joker. No, I don't believe you should typecast Willem Dafoe as the Joker. It's too easy. I think you should get an actor that you wouldn't even expect to be the Joker. That's what worked with Heath Ledger. Even Joaquin Phoenix worked. Yes, Willem Dafoe has the face for it and he has to laugh. But if you put him as the Joker, I'm just gonna think Green Goblin. I don't even think Willem Dafoe wants to be the Joker. Maybe that's why people come up to me and say, you know what role you'd be perfect for? The Joker. Always nice to hear that you got the vibe of a sociopath. But speaking of which, that's what I loved about this Green Goblin performance. It's the fact that like he separates himself from being the Joker. I don't think the Joker whenever he's the Green Goblin. I think of the Green Goblin. And possibly the most brutal villain death scene I've ever seen. A glider straight to the dick. N -n Nothing beats that, tell you. Is it really pretentious to say that this movie is a masterpiece? It's not a word that I like to use lightly. Hardly ever. I don't like throwing it around like it's fucking candy. It should be reserved for the worthy, for those special types of movies. And I think this is one of them. I think Spider-Man is a masterpiece. Only beaten by another masterpiece. Okay, and of course in the Spider-Verse <laughs> and across the Spider-Verse. And maybe the Spider-Man No Way Home. But yeah, we'll get to those later. <laughs>